Tira. Thanks for doing this. Um, you mentioned that Brad Johnson been working a lot at Sam linebacker. Just is that still in place? And how's he looking out there? Yeah, he's doing a really good job. He's going to be the starter at Sam. Um, he's doing a great job for us. He's, he's also playing some bucking in for us, um, but he's doing a really good job of learning this position. Um, it's a position that he's a natural at, and um, it's been going well so far. So if we continue to um, progress like we're doing right now, I feel really comfortable about him, you know, being our starting Sam moving forward. Um, but he does some great things. He's a strong guy. He's hard to block on the edge, um, which will play a little more regular this year. So it, it, it'll help us in those areas. Ben Brenner. What is uh what what has Shiloh Sanders been able to show you through the course of camp and how far has he come since the end of last season? He's really doing a good job of, of understanding the defense. He's doing so so much better that um Shiloh hadn't played a bunch of football. Um, so now he's starting to learn the different techniques. And that's the one of the things that we talk to him about all the time is just his technique and pad level and things like that. But as far as grasp of the defense, he's doing a really good job of that. He's making some plays out there. And the one thing about Shallow, when you turn on tape, whether it's defense, whether it's special teams, he's playing fast. And um, that's, a, that, that's a great quality to have. Colin Taylor. It's here, with, with Shiloh, if you were in nickel and you moved Jamie down to, to the nickel spot, would Shiloh be the first guy off the bench? And yeah, just, right now we're, we're still kind of determining who that guy will be. Um, but Shallow has been repping with the black in that department some, um, which is our first group. Um, he, so he's done that. Um, Jalen Dickerson, when he's out there, he's done a little bit of that. Um, so we got a bunch of different combinations, whether it's JC, whether it's um, Izzy, all those guys have played some safety. And, and for our guys, we're just trying to figure out who's the best five guys. And, uh, and we'll kind of go that way. But like I told our guys, man, especially with this year, you know, more so than any other year, you know, everybody got to be ready. And they always have to, but this re this year in, in particular, that, that's going to be the case. Um, so we, we're getting a bunch of guys ready at a bunch of different positions. Um, you look up, you see JC playing some nickel, playing some safety. Izzy playing some nickel, playing some safety. RJ playing some dime, playing some nickel, playing some safety. I mean, I had Jamie um, playing some corner on, and I guess two scrim two practices ago. So we, we, we're just trying to get, you know, a combination of guys and letting guys feel comfortable playing every spot because that's going to happen at some point this year. Hill. Coach Mosh Chambo always talks about the next play mentality. Uh, and RJ was in there earlier talking about how he's really tried to be conscious about moving on from, from mistakes. Uh, how important is it for, for not just him, but for anybody who's back there at safety to be able to, you know, flush a, a bad play or even a good play and, and move on to the next one? It's very important. Now, I think that's probably the most important thing to, to play in the secondary. I tell our DBs all the time, you know, a DB that's consistently beaten is a DB that won't play. All right, and a DB that's, I said it wrong. I, I, I guess I don't say it to him all the time. <laughs> oh, hey, a DB that's never been beaten is a DB that's never played. A DB that's consistently beaten is a DB that won't play. Um, so when we talk in terms of that, you know, it, it's going to happen out there uh, through a course of a ball game, through a course of a season. It's going to be some negative things happen. Um, it's going to also be some positive things happen. And either way, we have to get ready to play the next play, and don't worry about that. We talk in terms of, in terms of a 70 snap game, we talk in terms of, of 70 different plays, 70 different opportunities to do your job and, and don't worry about the play before that or after that, all right, for that case. Ben? What has it done for you guys just having Ernest back out there? What does he kind of bring energy-wise to practice and, and running the defense? He does a great job. Obviously, he's very knowledgeable um, on what we're doing on defense. Um, he's a guy who provides juice at practice. Um, it's been uh, such a pleasure to have him back out there. I got a lot of young guys because right now he's repping with the Garnet group because he's not all the way full go. And um, so th those guys love playing with him because of the communication part of it. He's telling guys what to do, what to line, and that's what we're going to need for him moving forward. And he's doing a really good job with that. But Ern is a really good football player, and um, we're going to need him to play well for us to play well. Go back to Hale. To, to follow up on RJ with, with that deal, uh, is is he showing signs of, of being able to to move past some of those hiccups when, when he's out there and, and getting better? Well, he, he's showing signs of maturity. And I think that's one of the big things that, that RJ has really, you know, strived on and really worked on this this, this offseason and moving forward now as we get towards the season. Um, but he's doing a really good job with that. Um, and that's the one thing that, that's the only thing that can set him back is just, you know, lack of, you know, paying attention to the details and smaller things. And I think he, he kind of growing up and he understands that now and he's doing a lot better. And um, I'm excited if he continued in this path, he'll have a heck of a year. Colin. Yeah, T-Rev, you kind of talked 
um, earlier in the press conference about playing a little bit more regular this year. What about your your base group makes you feel really comfortable to do that um, with this this? I feel really good about our four defensive backs. Um, still working on it. It's going to be a young guy at, at playing at the fifth spot, whether it be Shiloh, whether it be Cam, whether it be John, or whoever. It's going to be a young guy that hadn't had a bunch of reps. And um, you look at a guy like Brad and what he's able to do, it'll be tough for me to have a package going in a bunch and Brad on the sideline with me. You know how physical we play, how hard he play. Um, so we want to find some ways to get him out on the grass. And I think that's our best way to do it is to have a regular package and go that way. We're going to have to play some nickel. We're going to have to play. He's going to have to go in the game and play some buck and some in, some different things like that also. But I think, you know, just getting the right guys on the field, I think he, he he's a part of our top 11. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like you have the, the pecking order of your interior defensive line uh, a little clearer and more set at this point? I, I think those guys are doing a great job. You look at the terms of Kier and Jabari, I'm going to probably be our top guys. And, then, you know, with Zach and Ricky um, coming in right after that, and, and those guys are getting better and better each day. Um, I think Coach Rocket does a great job with those guys of just getting them physically and mentally ready to play. And um, I think right now, you know, Zach need to have a breakout year. This is a big year for Zach. It's a big year, you know, for Ricky. So those guys are doing a great job. And I think those four guys will be the guys you'll primarily see inside. And then with the young guys, just trying to see who that next guy going to be, whether it's going to be Alex Huntley, whether it's going to be Makai Scott, whether it's going to be an MJ Webb. I don't know that yet. Um, we're still kind of pecking through that to see. John Whittle. You mentioned Ernest Jones is a guy who y'all really need to play well. Are there is there another guy or two on on defense you kind of circle and say, man, for us to be a great defense, we really need to have this guy play well and why? I think um, JJ and Barway, as far as his pass rest ability um, and different things we're asking him to do, I think that's going to be important for our success. Obviously, we got to play good up front. You know, you start looking at our first couple of ball games, we got to be able to stop the run, and um, so Kier and Jabari. And just those front seven guys got to play well. But if I had to just signal out a guy and I'd use Ernest, and then I would use in a situation like that, what you asked, I'll use JJ and Barry as a guy who who need to really step up, who has to more than the ability to do it and um, just need to do it. And um, I think he will. He had a great camp so far. Is that something you convey to him, just how how important he is? and and Or how, how does that happen? No, that's something that we have. And, and I think I, it's peer pressure more so than coming from the coach. I think we say it enough outside the building and in the building um, that our players are, are understanding the guys that we need to play plays. I tell them all the time, we have some role guys on our team. These guys are role players, and we need them to play hard. We need them to play good. We need them to be in the right spot. And then we got some guys that have the rare ability to make some plays. And um, a lot of guys, you know, those guys that, that that's like that, you look at JC, you look at a guy like Ernest, you look at Israel, you look at Jamie Robinson, you look at a JJ and Barre. Those guys got got huge playmaking abilities, and they need to make plays in order for us to be really good. David, T. Rob, how is uh, Aaron Sterling holding down that end spot, and who's the top guy behind him? Yeah, Ernest is doing a pretty good job. He really is. I mean, um, Aaron is doing a really good job. He 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 he's, he's small guy when you see him in stature, um, but he plays hard. I mean, the guy can play four technique. Um, obviously, he can play on the edge, and he can rush, and he's been doing a great job of that. But he. He, 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 he's the soul of our football team. You know, we want our guys to be like Aaron, a guy that's an overachiever, um, and, and he, he, he's been great. But probably behind him, you look at a combination of Tonka, and then if we'll have to go to four down, you look at, you know, Brad as an end and J.J. as an end if we need to get to that. You know what I mean? So right now we're still working through that process with a guy like Kier Thomas who can always bump outside. And then Zach and Jabari or Ricky and Jabari and all those guys can go inside. So we got some different combinations. And again, of course, with the COVID and different things like that, we're, we're, we're forced to, 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 to do that at times at practice. And Coach Muschamp do a great job of scripting some of that stuff out for us. If that guy's not in, what are you going to do? What's your next step? So we got to get multiple guys ready at multiple spots. Um, but Tonka's coming a long way. Um, we need him to be a good player for us, and he will be eventually. And then, you know, um, Joe Anderson is a guy that need to keep coming on. Colin Taylor. Yeah, T-Rob, I guess you mentioned in your last availability and then a little bit today, it's come on, this year's almost like having a 53-man roster in the NFL where you're having to cross-train a bunch of guys. I'm wondering how, once the season starts, how do you go about repping depth and getting guys to play when you're in the middle of installing the game plan too? Yeah, I, you know, we talked about that um, as a staff here as of late. And, um, 
you know, one of the things that we got to do a good job of is, you know, keeping guys up and having a, a ready call list um, for guys that's not playing a bunch of defense but might have to play a lot of defense. You know, we can get a, a bad result on the test on Friday with some contact tracing behind it, and um, we can lose a couple of guys going into a ball game, and you have to be able to have the staples of your defense. So we got to do a great job of keeping those guys um, active. We'll rotate in, in, as far as what we're doing um, with the scout team. It'll be different guys going over there because everybody got to be engaged with the game plan. And I think that's going to be very important. And Coach Muschamp talk about it all the time. The most mature team will win. And um, that's going to be a part of the maturity that he's talking about. Hill. Coach, just want to see uh, how Jordan Burge has come along uh, to this point, Cam. Where, where is he at yeah, now? Jordan, Jordan's doing a good job. Um, obviously, he, he have a lot of expectations. And, um, and, and he knows that. But he, he's doing a good job. He's a very focused kid. He's a very um, humble kid. And um, it's crazy because you get a guy who's recruited the way he's recruited. You know, sometimes it takes him a while to, to understand who they really are. But I think he's done a good job of that. And I tell you what, man, he's he just got to continue to keep learning the defense and different things like that. And we got to put him in some, you know, some um, advantageous um, situations that, that, that he can be successful. John Whittle. You know, what do you make of the situation up at up at Tennessee where they've had to cancel scrimmages and are, are behind in practices, have so many guys out? Do, do you pay attention to that as, as a defensive coordinator, just kind of wondering what's going on up there, or do you try to block that kind of thing out? I'll be perfectly honest. Until you said that, I really didn't know. Um, right now, I'm focused on what we're doing, to be quite honest with you, and I know that sounds like a coach's answer, but it's the truth. Um, right now, we're, we're worried about the things that we need to deal with and, um, and next week we'll, we'll, we'll move forward and start looking towards um, our opponents and things like that and start to come up with game plans and work on different things that we'll use in the game. But for right now, we're kind of just worried about us. Now, I know Coach Muschamp, you know, guys that can kind of think a little ahead, they, they can worry about some of that stuff, so he might know, but I, I, I really don't know that right now. Yeah, if, if, if you felt like you were behind in practice and had half, half of your team sitting out, what would, what would go across your mind as a coach? I better get the other guys ready. I mean, they ain't, they ain't stopping the game. So so we got to get these guys ready, and um, our guys know that. And that's one of the things that we've been talking about since we came back. You know, next man up, always be ready to go, even more so than you've ever been. We talk about it all the time, but now it, it, it's true. And, and, I mean, it can be, I mean, the night before the ball game, and, and you get a guy, and the guy's out. They come tell you that. What are you going to do? It ain't, we ain't going to play the game because, you know, one of these guys ain't out there. We still scrapping it up and it's still going to be on TV and it's still going to count. So we got to be prepared. And um, that's what we're doing in practice. Coach put us in those situations all the time. Any other questions for T-Rap? If not, we'll let Ben get out of the sun. He looks like he's cooking in that car. So we'll let him go. I mean, Appreciate it, T-Rock. I tell you what, we got all these black screens again. There's man. a lot of black screens they, there. They're they, they getting paid for this, man. They're in the sack right now, man. Got guys in the car. See y'all later, man. Y'all enjoy. Bye, right, coach.